हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी स्टडीड अबाउट द इंडक्टेंस इफ यू रिमेंबर द इंडक्टेंस वॉज वेन अ करंट इज सेटअप इन अ सिस्टम ऑफ अ टू कॉइल सो इफ यू कंसिडर अ सिस्टम ऑफ टू कॉइल एंड इफ आई सेटअप अ करंट इन एनी वन कॉइल देन द मैग्नेटिक फ्लक्स प्रोड्यूस्ड इज लिंक्ड विद द अदर कॉइल एंड एज अ रिजल्ट the current is induced in the other coil that was a mutual inductance that was mutual inductance and we found that general case where the flux linked with any coil is directly proportional to the current because the current is responsible for producing the magnetic field so if current is passed through a coil the magnetic field is produced and hence the magnetic flux now if i keep a coil another coil near to the first coil in which we have set up the current then that flux produced by the first coil in which you have set up the current that gets linked with the second coil and if there is a change in current the magnetic flux linked with the first coil will also change and the change in flux induces the emf or the uh, induced current so if i consider this system of two coil then such inductance will be referred as mutual inductance and it is also possible that when the current is varied from any one coil the magnetic flux is linked with the coil itself and there is a variation in the magnetic field or a magnetic flux and this induces the current in the coil itself which will be known as self inductance we will study in detail today about a mutual inductance that is topic number 6.9.1 mutual inductance so mutual as indicate it is a system of two coil or a system of any two solenoid we take an example in any case we should remember that the flux linked with any one of the coil in the system of two coil is directly proportional to the current set up in the another coil so as i increase a current or decrease a current it means if i vary a current the magnetic flux linked with the coil also changes and as a result the emf is induced in it so that will be known as the mutual inductance that will be known as mutual inductance now let us try to understand the inductance by taking an example of a system of two solenoid so we take a two solenoid a very long solenoid which are kept coaxial with each other that is their axis coincide now we have a two coil of different radius different number of turns but the length is same and one coil oh sorry one solenoid is kept inside the another solenoid but it is not necessary that both the solenoid should be kept uh, inside each other even if the two coil are placed close to each other you will see this property of mutual inductance but we take an example of two solenoid one will be referred as outer solenoid and one will be referred as inner solenoid so let us consider a outer solenoid so let us say this is an outer solenoid having and two number of turns so let us assume this solenoid as a outer solenoid and we name this solenoid as s2 we name this solenoid as s2 this is the axis of the solenoid so here also i draw a diagram this is our solenoid this is the axis of the solenoid inside it let us name this solenoid as s2 or we call it a outer solenoid 
and another solenoid having different number of turns but they are concentric the length is assumed to be same so this is an another solenoid which is kept inside it so two solenoids are kept coaxial or concentric with each other having different number of turns this solenoid is called as inner solenoid these are the two ends of the solenoid let like this solenoid is named as s1 so another solenoid having different number of turns is kept inside a solenoid it is assumed that the length of both the solenoid is same so let l be the length of the solenoid these are the two ends so this solenoid is named as s1 we will set up current in one solenoid due to which the current will be induced in the another solenoid let the radius of this solenoids be r1 so this is the radius of s1 and this is the radius of s2 solenoid so here s1 is inner solenoid and s2 is outer solenoid we write the main points of the diagram r1 and r2 are the radius so it can be understood from the diagram n1 and n2 are the number of turns of s1 and s2 respectively length of both solenoid length of both solenoid is l that is same and both are kept coaxial having a same axis so this is the summary of our diagram now we will set up a current in any one solenoid so turn by turn we will set up the current in this solenoid so let us first set up the current i2 in the outer solenoid so in the outer solenoid we pass a current i2 now what happen when the current i2 is set up in solenoid s2 or the outer solenoid it produce a magnetic field this magnetic field produce the magnetic flux and that magnetic flux which was called flux linkage in the previous lecture so the flux get linked with solenoid number 1 or inner solenoid it means whatever number of feed lines this solenoid will produce it will pass through this inner solenoid so the situation is like this we have this outer solenoid we know when we pass a current through it this was a uniform magnetic field lines inside the solenoid on the edges it is curved or it form a closed loop so this was the situation uh when the current is passed through solenoid when the current is passed through solenoid now this magnetic field lines that is a number of field lines passing through a cross section of the solenoid here area vector and the magnetic field are in the same direction so the magnetic field produced by outer solenoid 
B2 is equal to mu naught N2 I2. That was the formula. This is the magnetic field. Now this magnetic field is responsible to produce the magnetic flux. That magnetic flux is linked with the inner solenoid S1. So now if I draw an inner solenoid, this is the inner solenoid. So the magnetic flux get linked uh, uh, to the inner solenoid. Means the number of field lines will also pass through the inner solenoid. That is called the flux is linked with the inner solenoid or flux linkage. It is called flux linkage. So we set up current in outer solenoid. Then we will see we can also set up the current in inner solenoid. So we consider two cases today. So first we set up current in outer solenoid. That outer solenoid produce the magnetic field. Let us name this B2. This B2 produce the magnetic flux. So the magnetic flux linked with inner solenoid S1 that is called flux linkage is directly proportional to the current. So if I pass more current through this, the current pass through outer solenoid is I2. It is I2. So more is a current I2, more is a magnetic field, intensity, flux is Ba cos theta. Here, theta is 0. So the flux is B into A. We will see B2 can be taken like this. This is your B2, but we will talk about the area. If you refer a diagram, it is not that all the magnetic field lines pass through the inner solenoid because its area, which is pi r1 square, is less than the outer solenoid. So if this outer solenoid, let us assume, produce five field lines, then all the field lines will not pass through the inner solenoid. But at the same time, the inner solenoid is completely immersed in the magnetic flux or the magnetic field of the outer solenoid. Completely immersed means puri tarah se duba hua hai. Jitne bhi field lines S2 ne produce ki hai, usme se puri space jo inner solenoid ka area hai, wo bhara hua hai. Kis se bhara hua hai? Magnetic field lines or the magnetic field produced by S2. So there is no empty space. The entire solenoid, inner solenoid is said to be immersed inside the outer solenoid, which will not be the case if we set up the current in inner solenoid. We will ref, uh, come to this point. So let us assume that this outer solenoid produce five field lines. One, two, three, four, five. So out of five, suppose two lines are outside here, two lines are outside here. So only one field line passes through this. So the flux link, now if I increase this current, the magnetic field will also increase. We have not changed the dimension. So the number of field lines, that is the pictorial representation will also increase. So number of field lines will increase. So more number of field lines will pass through it. This was what we did in the last lecture that the magnetic flux or the flux linkage is directly proportional to the current. And as a result, now if I change I2, if I change I2, B2 will change. If B2 changes, the flux linkage with S1 will also change. As a result, the EMF is induced in S1 or there is an induced current in S1, which will oppose the change which should oppose the change. So it is like north was approaching towards one coil. So Lenz says north, if the north approaches, 
the coil face which is facing the magnet should also behave like a north pole it should oppose the change so when we try to increase or decrease the i2 current will be induced in s1 but it will oppose the growth and the decay of the current we will come to this point again that this is the behavior of an inductor now we will uh, understand one more component like a capacitor there is another component which is called inductor it opposes the growth and the decay of the current so when i am increasing i2 b2 increases this b2 increases the flux linkage with s1 so emf is induced in s1 or induced there is a induced current this induced current behavior should be or it will be such that it oppose the change so i2 badhega to badhne nahi dega ghatega to ghatne nahi dega it will always oppose us that is the magnetic flux linkage is directly proportional to the current setup in any one coil in a system of the two coil so this is the magnetic field produced so let i2 be the current set up in s2 so flux linkage flux linkage with s1 is given by kis mein induction hone wala hai s1 mein induction hone wala hai so flux linked with s1 this is the flux linkage let the number of the turns of this is n1 so if there are n turns then the total number of turns multiplied by the flux linked with each turn total it is called as the flux linkage so flux linked with s1 is directly proportional to the i yesterday we have uh, in the last lecture we have seen this so it is like this is our source and it produces the induction in the other coil and when we will pass a current through s1 induction will be in s2 so flux linkage is directly proportional to the current set up in a another coil or a solenoid therefore n1 phi1 is equal to yesterday or in the previous lecture we introduce the constant of proportionality which was called inductance if it is a system of two coil or two solenoid then we use this constant mutual inductance we call this constant of proportionality as mutual inductance now this will be named as m12 mutual inductance of one due to two or with respect to two mutual inductance of one induction kis mein hone wala hai s1 s2 is a source so induction one mein to m12 i this is one equation clearly if flux changes the derivative of the flux with respect to time is emf so emf will be equal to minus m12 di2 by dt that we will see so here m12 is a constant of proportionality and it is called mutual inductance of s1 with respect to s2 it is also called coefficient of mutual inductance so here m1 a m12 is called mutual inductance of s1 with respect to s2 or it is simply named as mutual coefficient mutual coefficient of induction mutual coefficient of induction so either you call it the um, 
mutual inductance of S1 with respect to S2 or we can call it the mutual coefficient of induction or coefficient of mutual inductance. So we also sometimes call it uh, mutual coefficient of induction or coefficient of mutual induction. Coefficient of mutual induction. It will be easy to read this. Later on we will see this subscript 1 and 2 that is M12 or M21 will not have any significance because we will prove M12 is equal to M21. So in that case we will always call this constant as a coefficient of mutual induction. So this is first equation. Now let us see how this flux linkage take place in S1. Now N1 phi 1 is equal to now let us introduce number of turns per unit length. So N1 can be written as N1 L where N1 is a number of turns per unit length we know. Flux linked with S1. How this flux is linked? What was the source of this flux? The source of this flux was the magnetic field of the outer solenoid. So here in the place of this phi 1 we know the flux formula is Ba cos theta. Theta is 0. So I will write B2 area of A1. A1 means inner solenoid area. Why we have taken this area that we will see in the end for the time being you remember that a flux linked with inner solenoid is equal to the magnetic field of the source that is outer solenoid into A1. This can be written as N1L1 what was the magnetic field mu naught N2 I2 and what is the area of inner solenoid that is pi r1 square. So the formula becomes mu naught n1 n2 i2 and pi r square into the length of the solenoid. Here the length of the solenoid is same that is l. So we write here l. So re mu naught n1 n2 l pi r1 square i2 this is equation number 2 so n1 phi 1 if i divide this n1 phi 1 by i2 that is m12 so we derived the formula for mutual inductance or compare equation 1 and 2 so comparing equation 1 and equation 2 we find that n12 is equal to mu naught n1 n2 length of the solenoid pi r1 square this is the formula for the mutual inductance of s1 with respect to s2 so it is also called as the coefficient of the mutual induction. Coefficient of mutual induction. So this is M12. And later on we will see that if I vary this I2, this flux will also vary and there will be a induced current in S1. There will be an induced current. And the induced current will be in such a way that it will oppose the change means when our i2 is increasing it will oppose this growth of a current and if i2 decreases it opposes the growth also so in other word we will talk about our inductor component and inductor 
opposes the growth and the decay of the current so it is a component which will oppose the growth and the decay of the current we will see what is an inductor but remember we haven't talked about the induced current because induction is not possible with a constant current so in this if i2 is constant b is constant the flux linked with coil 1 or solenoid 1 is a constant so induction will take place only when there is a change in magnetic flux or magnetic field that is how we started the chapter so i have to change i2 so if i increase i2 that is the current is growing up in s2 so flux linked with s1 will change change in flux induced emf is equal to minus n1 d5 1 upon dt so we do the derivative on both sides so it becomes induced emf in 1 will be equal to i can write like this whenever i want it emf induced in 1 is equal to minus n1 d5 1 upon dt that is the derivative of this so it becomes minus m12 di2 by dt so that is e1 so mutual inductance can also be defined as emf induced upon di2 by dt so what is mutual inductance of 1 with respect to 2 so emf induced in one coil of the system of two coils or solenoid in the place of coil you can say a solenoid also so mutual inductance of one i call this one and two as an another solenoid mutual inductance of one with respect to another solenoid is equal to the ratio of the emf induced in one coil of the system of two coil to the time rate of change of electric current through the another coil induction e1 mein hoga current change i2 ka karenge tab so this is an another definition of the mutual inductance we will come to this point later on today we are simply deriving the formula for mutual inductance so you see this formula now instead of the current which we have set up in s2 we set up a current in s1 so we change the subscript now let i1 be the current set up in s1 now in this situation the current is set up in the inner coil or inner solenoid so the flux will be linked so flux linkage with s2 is n2 phi2 directly proportional to s1 now i pass a current now i pass a current through an inner solenoid so this was my outer solenoid now this is my inner solenoid current is passed through inner solenoid for example just, just, uh, this is just an example if the outer solenoid produce five field lines the inner solenoid produce a field lines which is confined to itself only because outside the solenoid the magnetic field is zero so see the diagram properly when i pass a current through this outer solenoid this is the situation field lines these are the field lines of s so this is the field line like this equidistance and parallel to each other uniform two lines cannot intersect this is the situation so see if there are 10 field lines for example all the 10 lines will not pass through this but this inner solenoid is completely immersed 
inside the outer solenoid completely inside but if i pass a current through an inner solenoid the outer solenoid is not completely immersed you see this there is a space outside the inner solenoid so this is the empty space now how many field lines are is produced by inner solenoid say 3 so what will be the flux linked with the outer solenoid three field lines only assuming there are no losses there is no resistance of this solenoid so total product total line passing through inner solenoid is three even if it produce the 10 field lines the total line passing through inner will be three because of its dimension its dimension is small its radius is small as compared to the outer solenoid so the maximum field lines passing through inner solenoid is suppose 3 then when I pass uh, the current through outer solenoid then also the three field lines pass through it due to its dimension because of its dimension uh, though it all depends on the magnitude of the current also but now from both this diagram I can say if I pass a current through outer solenoid the entire space whether it is a outer solenoid or in inner solenoid all are immersed in the magnetic field line this is not the case here if i pass a current through inner solenoid the outer solenoid is not fully immersed is not fully immersed so n2 phi 2 is proportional to i1 that is opposite with it therefore n2 phi 2 now current is passed through inner solenoid i1 so magnetic field produced by it will be mu naught n1 i1 flux is linked with phi 2 induction will be in s2 this is equal to m21 i1 now we name this as equation number 3 or sorry this was 3 say this is equation number 4 now this will be called as mutual inductance of S2 with respect to S1 or we will say one two will be M21 value will come to this only. So it will be referred as coefficient of mutual induction similar to the coefficient of friction so this will be the case now let us talk about this flux now n2 phi 2 is equal to n2 that can be written as number of turns per unit length of outer solenoid flux the flux who produced the flux inner solenoid so magnetic flux again the area of inner we will talk uh, about it but it should be clear from the diagram completely immersed not completely immersed so why this area is always taken of an inner solenoid so this will be equal to n2l b1 mu naught n1 i1 pi r1 square therefore now if i compare equation 4 and 5 equation 4 and 5 let us compare this equation 4 and 5 so comparing this equation 4 and equation 5 let us compare this equation or you take this i1 in the denominator so n2 phi 2 upon i1 is m21 so if i compare this m21 is equal to mu naught n1 n2 l pi r1 square so this is equation number 6 now you compare this equation 3 equation 6 so comparing equation 3 
and equation 6. What we found? M12 is equal to M21 that is equal to mu naught. N1, N2 length is same. Area of the inner. You have to remember like this. Mu naught, N1, N2 length same inner radius. So this is sometimes simply written as capital M. This is simply written as capital M and it is read as the coefficient of mutual induction. So what we proved from this that whether you pass a current through an inner solenoid or an outer solenoid, the mutual inductance of the system, the mutual inductance of the system comes out to be same. So whatever current I pass, whether from inside or outside, inner solenoid or outer solenoid, the mutual inductance comes out to be same. Now which is uh, the better way or why we have taken uh, this inner uh, area in both the cases. So clearly I said you in this situation the inner solenoid is said to be completely immersed. The space of inner solenoid is completely filled. The flux linkage is complete, efficient. This is called completely immersed. Completely immersed in the magnetic field or the magnetic field lines of an outer solenoid. This is the situation. But in this situation, see in this diagram, again, current is passed through inner solenoid. So all the field lines are again passing through inner solenoid. So outer solenoid is not completely immersed. It is always the inner solenoid which is completely immersed. So in this situation, the first case that is passing a current through an outer solenoid, it will be better option and M12 will be easily calculated as compared to M21, though the value is same. But in other words, I can say the loss in this situation is more because if I change the medium of an inner solenoid, the medium inside the inner solenoid and the remaining space, the remaining space of outer solenoid have a different medium. So calculation become little bit difficult and in this the chances of loss is very less or you remember calculation of M12 is more easier as compared to M1, M21 though the value comes out to be same. So whether we pass a current through inner or outer solenoid it is your choice. But it will be better if we pass a current through an outer solenoid so that the inner solenoid or inner coil is completely immersed in it. So this was an example of solenoid. Even if I take a system of two coil, I can take a system of two coil, say coil 1, radius is R1, coil 2, radius is R2, kept concentric to each other. I can find out its mutual inductance also. Now how will you find out the mutual inductance? We will have uh, this example also. I think there will be one example related to this. So the system of, there can be a system of any two coil or a system of two solenoid. The method remains same. Set up a current in one coil. The flux is linked with another coil. You write the flux linked with another coil directly proportional to the current passed through the first coil. 
then find out mutual inductance. Now no need to find out the mutual inductance two times because we found that now this is for solenoid. This formula is valid for solenoid only. If I change the geometry, that is two coils, circular coils kept concentric to each other, then the mutual inductance will change. So here M12 is equal to M21 is called as M. And for solenoid, the formula becomes mu naught, N1, N2. Then you have to remember the common length. Again, we have assumed the length is same. Pi 1, the area of the inner coil. This is, this is some time. Or this is called as theorem of, theorem of reciprocity. So what is theorem of reciprocity? The theorem of reciprocity is that the mutual inductance of the system of the two coils or two solenoid remains same. That is M12 is equal to M21 is equal to M. That is theorem of reciprocity. So this is the mutual inductance of the two solenoid. If you are given a choice to find out the mutual inductance of a system, don't find M12 and M21 separately. They always comes out to be same. But remember, if it is in our hand, it is a better option to pass a current through a coil or solenoid having larger dimension as compared to the inner. Because it is a system and generally to avoid the losses, the two coils or two solenoids are kept concentric to each other. They are kept inside coaxial and co uh, axial and co uh, concentric. So they are kept concentric to each other and coaxial to avoid the losses. And whenever you get an option to pass a current, it is in your hand. So always pass a current through a coil having a larger dimension as compared to the inner coil and always take a area of an inner coil because whether you pass a current through inner solenoid or outer solenoid the inner coil or inner solenoid should be completely immersed so this case will be far better as compared to this case though the answer comes out to be same so we have taken area in both the cases to be same. You can see this. Whether I take this, the field lines passing through inner solenoid is say 3. Here also we assume it is 3 only. This is complete immersion. This is not a complete immersion. So this is all about we have the mutual inductance. In the coming lecture, we will talk about a self-inductance. Now, what will happen in self-inductance? There will be one solenoid or only one coil. We will pass the current through it. The flux linked with the coil itself and it will induce the current in itself which will oppose our current. It means it will oppose the growth and the decay of the current. So if I have a single solenoid and the current is varied, then same solenoid will be referred as a inductor. So inductor is nothing but a coil which consists of n turns and self-inductance comes into picture whenever I try to change the magnetic flux. Source be khud, we will pass a current through it. That current will be varied. This current varied will vary the magnetic field. This variation in magnetic field will produce the change in flux. This change in flux according to Faraday law induce current. So current will be induced in the coil itself. So it will oppose our current. So if I try to suppose there is only one solenoid. Now if I try to increase the current induced current will oppose me. If I try to decrease the current it will oppose me. So it opposes the growth and the decay of the current if we have a single solenoid or a single coil 
and in that situation this n will be replaced by l but there will be no subscript 1 and 2 the flux link linked with will be with 1 the current will also be passed through 1 that we will see in the next lecture have a nice day